Hello! If you're in high school, you may feel like every day you're going to die. I want to teach you how to not do that. Hey guys, my name is David Prater. I have a cold, which is why I'm like really congested right now, but I don't care. This is a crash course in high school survival. Take notes, pay attention, hopefully we'll both get something out of this today. I am on the last quarter of my senior year in high school. I'm one of those reflective types. I look back at my life and I see how I've changed and how everything around me has changed and how I've made changes to better myself and how some of them left me a little bit worse off than where I started. I don't really try to focus on that part. The big things I look at are the things that have made me grow positively. A consistent upward slope. I have noticed a few things though, so I want to share those with you right now. The first thing that we're going to look at is the transition period, especially if you're in junior high or middle school and you're going to transition into high school. There are a few things that you need to remember. One, just because you were the top dog at your old middle school or junior high school does not mean that you're going to keep that position whenever you go into the high school. Why? Good question. You're going from up here, now you're low man on the totem pole once again. It seems like you had just got to the top. Yes, finally. And then you're straight back down. That's the social hierarchy. I know a lot of people with older siblings who are seniors in high school and they were like, oh dude, I'm gonna go hang out with all them, go to their parties and stuff. You're not gonna do that. That's never going to happen because you're a freshman and they're not. So that's the first big thing. You have to keep yourself humble. Freshman year of high school is a humbling experience, but you also have to keep in mind that you're in the same boat as everybody else. So whenever you think that maybe, you know, they're doing something right and you're not doing something right, that's probably not it. Your barriers have just been shattered by the transition into high school. They were expecting it. And so they came prepared with a little thing I like to call number two, confidence. Just because you're not gonna be right at the top does not mean that you should hold back at all. You need to go in there full force. I'm not saying you should go in there with a shirt that says I'm the greatest or something because that's stupid but you need to show who you are to the people that will accept who you are so find a group of people any group of people it doesn't matter really find a group of people that you're interested in talking to and start talking to them you don't want to try too hard and sometimes that means staying under the radar a little bit if you try too hard it shows a lot but you also want to show up a little bit somehow it's a tough balance but I think you can figure it out let's continue that's what we have so far you need to humble yourself yet you need to have confidence. Keep in mind that changes, like physical changes in your body, puberty is still a thing. That's still a factor that you have to live with. I'm still going through that too. It's not just whenever you're young, it, it keeps going, especially in guys. Keeping that in mind, you have to realize that everybody is going through the same thing as you are. They may have the confidence that you've lost in the transition. As you get a little bit older, you can start expanding your friends a little bit more. Some people may say that that's not a good thing. I 100% disagree. Throughout life, if you can network with new people, you can do anything. That's the truth, by the way. You can take that one to the bank. You need to expand continuously. So you're talking to one group of people throughout maybe freshman, halfway through sophomore year. Then you grow out a little bit over to these other people over here. I'm in band, so my first group of friends was just band kids. And then it grew to other people that are not involved in band at all, and then to the football people, and cheerleader, and you know, and they it grows out. And that's because you're always keeping the sense of confidence up here, maybe not out here, but you're keeping it in your head and that shows through your actions. So as long as you are continuing to develop that way with new friends and new networks of people, you'll always find something new and interesting in your own high school experience. Keeping it lively, not killing it. Cause like I said, you don't want to die. Sometimes you may feel like there is no group that will accept you. That's when you have to go into a completely new group of people out of nowhere, guns loaded, ammo on the back, Kevlar in the front. You just need to go in, reach in like you're aiming for the heart, take it out and say, hey, I'm new in town. That's probably not true, actually. You're not gonna be new in town, but if you are, it's, it's even better. A big part of the high school experience, as much as people hate to admit it, is acting. Some people call that not being true to yourself. Other people call that portraying something that you've never tried before. That's what I call it actually, so I guess that's probably not too fair. Anyway, for the longest time, let me tell you about myself, I guess. Throughout junior high, I stayed 100% under the radar. Nobody knew who I was. A lot of the reason was because my body was changing. I'm like, why am I getting fat and why am I doing like weird things? Why are my jokes so not jokey? Then I went up into high school and I'm at one person in particular. I'm not gonna use any names here because that's weird, but he was a senior in high school, he was also in band, but he didn't portray this whole I'm a band nerd that you expect people in band to have. He had this sense of confidence and self-awareness that propelled him through his senior year. I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be just like that one day. And that was my freshman year. That's really all I remember, meeting that one guy. My sophomore year, I became a little bit better known, I think. I have no clue. I trolled the crap out of my English teacher every day the entire year. And I, I apologize to you if you're watching this. 
I don't think you are, but if you are, I was a bad egg that year. But still, nothing really ever happened for me because I stayed with my one group of friends and I didn't leave them because I was afraid of leaving them. The next year, my junior year, last year, that's what really started it for me because I finally started to talk to groups of people who I had never spoken to before. And I realized that the, the main thing that people always talked about, confidence, that's 100% what you have to have. That is in terms of talking to teachers and talking to girls and talking to anybody. If you can speak to somebody with confidence, you own the world. That's not some fallacy. All you need to know. And by the end of my junior year though, I really started to feel comfortable talking to people who I was not used to talking to and meeting new people. And then over the summer, I continued to change even more for the better. I really don't even remember much about the summer. I just remember that at the end of it, I decided that I wanted to go into my senior year a completely different person than I had ever been before. So I got my hair cut, I grew some balls, and I went in full force, not bonded by the old friendships that are supposed to be eternal, but by the new ones that I was trying to build. And I started talking to everybody. If I saw just a, a stranger, hello, it didn't matter. And eventually other people started recognizing me and I'm like, hi. And that, the trade-off between talking to people and people talking to you, that is what gives you the confidence, propels you through to be a better, more advanced you. And that's the goal for the rest of my senior year. You know, just whatever. I just want to test my boundaries a little bit. I don't know, that sounds rebellious. That's another thing. If you feel rebellious, uh, don't do it. I have an entire life ahead of me to make mistakes. Why waste all of that time in high school? In four years of my life, whenever if I really, really want to just screw myself up just for like a day or something, I have a good 40, 45 years left to do that. And that sounds like a lot of time to me right now. So, I'm not too worried. And that's really all I can think of right now. If you really want to own your high school experience, you've got to live outside of your own realm for a little bit. Call it a new portrayal of yourself. If you don't like where you live right now, not physically, but like where you live socially, make it a future goal to change yourself in just one way. Say, this is something I'm struggling with, this is what I need to change. And if you can say that to yourself, then you can change it. And if all else fails, and none of these things are working, you've tried to humble yourself a little bit, you've tried putting yourself out there a little bit, but nothing is catching on. Just remember this little jingle that my father wrote that I say to myself every morning. Thumbs through the sky, we're on a our way. It's gonna be another F and good day. F and good, patent pending. And with that, I'm gonna go. So yeah. Bye?